junior year morning, all the way back in high school, me and around 20 other people were slowly shuffling out of our homeroom to get to our next class. I was one of the last to leave, having been furiously cramming for a chemistry quiz that I was going to have in 10 minutes. Uh, needless to say, I did not do well on that chemistry quiz, and now I'm a poet sign major. <laughs> but anyway, our homeroom teacher was standing at the door as we walked out, and she was holding a stack of papers in her hand. She was handing one to a few people as they left the room, and incidentally, I was one of the ones that she handed the paper to. I really didn't think much of it. I was concerned by the fact that I was about to fail my chemistry quiz. Um, but then later on, I looked down at the paper, and I noticed something a little off. It was an invitation to a workshop the following weekend on how to get your citizenship. Full stop. I don't need any pointers on how to get my citizenship. That's just something that doesn't apply to me. And at this point, I remembered that my teacher hadn't been handing this invitation out to everybody. She was deliberately giving it only to certain people in the class who were the non-white people in the class. The situation definitely arose some mixed emotions in me. But I didn't really feel equipped right then to reflect on what had just happened. I was stressed and being rushed, and now I had this interesting new can of worms to unpack. Yet later that day, when I sort of settled right back into the right state of mind, I still felt very mixed, very ambivalent, very unsure of how to read the situation. Even more than I might have just been offended that my teacher presumed I wasn't an American citizen due to my skin color, I was also, maybe even primarily, just straight up confused. I lived in a pretty diverse town in the Central Valley, which is just a couple of hours from here. 40 something percent of our town, maybe around 45% is white, um, the other 45% is Hispanic, and then the remaining um, percentages are filled up with a weird amalgamation of others. How could she, she being my teacher, have such a skewed view of the town that both she and I called home? Was she really operating under the assumption that half the town just weren't citizens? Begging the sub-question then of what does that really mean if somebody doesn't have that distinction of citizenship? And whether that means that our worldview of them and people like them is somehow supposed to be affected by that? Or was I maybe just overreacting on mine? I didn't really know her very well at all, but I hadn't yet witnessed her do anything outwardly. <coughs> and in her mind, she probably thought she was doing us all, us, everyone being the paper, everyone being the people she handed the paper out to, a favor. She was doing something quote unquote nice. And so attempting to look at the situation from as objective a lens as possible, I, this teacher was providing information on pathways to citizenship for the people she thought needed. For the people she thought needed. So my response back then wasn't to try and understand any underlying prejudices and preconceived notions beyond the superficial level. No, I internalized this flawed, destructive, and self-fulfilling notion that sometimes people's identities are just incompatible and coexistent whether that means living in a diverse town or teaching a class to a diverse set of students, does not always do enough to change that. But here I am now at Stanford, which is far, far more diverse than my hometown ever was. And not just in terms of specific numbers and counts of different types of people, but also resource-wise with community centers and yesterday alone having a dinner by an Italian association, Oktoberfest with a German group, a massive Diwali celebration with food and performances, and the night before having a Day of the Dead event. These sorts of celebrations, maybe shows is the right word actually, have an impact. When you showcase cultures and traditions to a diverse and inclusive audience, it does go far in terms of addressing the walls and spaces we put between us. Something that also comes to mind is our living arrangements. I'm paired with an Israeli immigrant who grew up in Seattle, a Chinese student who went to high school on the Atlantic coast, and a white baseball player from the Bay Area. I didn't use that mix of vibes with each other and with mine. Yet somebody, somebody at Stanford, was looking at our profiles and determined we were compatible roommates, and I wouldn't dispute that characterization. And so, I suppose if there's anything that anyone could take from a random experience of mine that I've been rambling about tonight, it'd be through a similar trajectory, through a similar lens that I have as my view towards the subject of incompatible identity shifting. And that's that there really is no barrier of entry to our interactions with each other, and that that perceived space between us, when it does really exist, is completely self-imposed meaning we alone have the power to change all of this ourselves. Thank you.